In this video, we're going to look at a more complex object and how this would translate into a multi-view drawing. So now we're looking at actual measurements versus units. So the process for centering is exactly the same. Um, we would first look at uh, going from top to bottom. I have pre-measured my paper at seven and one quarter inch. My object height is two and a half. That is for my front view. My top view is three quarters of an inch. So I know my total is then three and one quarter of an inch. So if I take my seven and a quarter, and I'm going to do this light minus my three and one quarter, that is going to give me four. And then I can divide that by three, which is going to give me one and one third inches. So I know that I need 1.3 inches, which is approximately an inch and three eighths. Um, just a little bit less, um, not quite down to five sixteenths, um, part way in between. So I know I need an inch and five sixteenths to three eighths. Um, that is my space going top um, to bottom vertically. I do the same thing to go across here. I know I need four and a half. And again, this direction, I'm also three quarters of an inch. So that's going to give me five and one quarter as my total that I need for this drawing. So I'm going to take my nine and a half minus my five and one quarter, which is going to drop me down to four and a quarter inches remaining. Um, again, if I divide that by three, uh, that's going to give me, that's going to go with my inch and three eighths, uh, divide my quarter out. Um, I'm going to end up with approximately an inch and a half, a um, little bit less. Um, again, you can get a lot more accurate, but for the sake of this discussion, I'm going to kind of round things here. So I'm going to probably call this one um, an inch and seven sixteenths. I'm going to get me pretty close, and then I'll go an inch and five sixteenths on my top to bottom. So again, once I've determined that, now I can figure out where to start things at. So I would start with my ruler here at my bottom corner. I'm going to go up my inch and five sixteenths things lined up correctly here. So approximately at that point, then I'm going to go over. I determined an inch and seven sixteenths. So I'm going to go right there. So this again becomes my point to start laying out my drawing. So I'm going to erase my chicken scratching that is on here. Um, for you guys, as you are working on your projects, please use scratch paper. Um, don't write on your drawings as I did. Um, that was more for the sake of discussion. So now I need to lay out the rest of my corners. Um, I can do that in the same fashion. Um, or I can go in and uh, measure from here to here, then over, calculate that or go around and finish uh, going corner to corner. Um, for me, for this, um, it's going to be probably just as quick um, just to go corner to corner. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to lay out my box um, lightly and quickly. Knowing that I need to go over my four and a half then I need my inch and we determined seven sixteenths in this direction so there would be my inch and my seven sixteenths and then I'd need to go another three quarters of an inch after that and that would be the corner of my box here now in theory that should leave me with that same inch and seven sixteenths left um, I'm just a little bit off, um, but we're pretty close, so I'm going to keep going with this um, right now just to 
get through our project and get through our video. So the other way to do that would be add those all up. Um, this was my four and a half plus my three quarter was five and a quarter. Um, give me six and a quarter um, plus my seven sixteenths. Um, so I would be at six and eleven sixteenths. So I could go in, start my measurement. There's my six and eleven sixteenths right here. That would be the corner of my box. I can do the same thing going up. Get this line drawn on here. Apologies if my head made it in the shot there. Um, so now I've got most of my box here. If I'm going up, I was at two and a half plus my um, three quarters was my three and a quarter. So I'd be at four and a quarter, four and eleven sixteenths. So again, I can mark that out. Find the corner of my box here. Do the same on the other side. Because we're using the graph paper, I'm just going to use that as guides and draw my other guideline. So now again, this is using measurements instead of units. Um, and I have laid out my box to create my drawing in. Now I realize it's fairly difficult to see, but I can see it in the view here. Um, again, I'm looking at a two and a half by four and a half as my total. So again, I am marking points. Um, I am going to do two of the views um, for this, and then I will probably stop so this does not get to be too long. So that was my two and a half. Go out to my four and a half. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me again. Um, there's my four and a half. So at that point, I could go up two and a half inches from my four and a half. Draw a line. I'm going to be able to come across from my two and a half to my other two and a half. And I need to double check where my marks are at. This one wasn't quite long enough. And again, always double check measurements. Um, it's easy to make mistakes. It's completely acceptable to make mistakes. Uh, we just need to catch those and fix them. So there is my view of my front. I'm going to go over to my side um, for my side view. Um, this one is going to be three quarters of an inch. So I go over to my three quarters mark. It's going to go up the same two and a half. So I can actually extend this line as another construction line. This is called projection of views. Um, I can extend it across, mark my three quarter over. Uh, then I will go up with that three quarter inch line. And there I have created my front view. I can do the same for my top view. I can again project this line. That will give me one of my lines for my object. And darken it in up here just a little bit. I'll measure down my three quarters of an inch. Right there. And I think on this one, I only want a half inch. So let me change that. Get these correct. And again, I have no problem with making mistakes. I make plenty of them, especially when I'm trying to talk while I do this. So that is my three quarters. I have my three quarters on this one. So again, I can go over and mark this. I'm going to darken in some lines once I do, um, just so you can see a little bit better. Now, we'd normally darken these in using our drawing tools. Um, I'm just going to go over them quick, again, for the sake of discussion, um, so we can see them a little bit better. So that becomes my top view. This becomes my front view, or sorry, my side view. And then this is my front view. Now normally I would not darken these construction lines, 
until I was done with everything and make them my object lines. But I just wanted you to see this, how it lays out on the paper, and it's now centered. So now I would go in, I would draw the rest of my views as I went in here. Um, this one, I'm just going to sketch some things. I'm not going to be completely accurate with it. Um, so for the sake of argument, we are looking at our angle. This ends up being erased. On our top view, I can again project this up. And I would see that. So now I want to get in and really talk about our hidden lines and center lines. Um, if I have a circle on my object, I can again project this across to my other view. And this is where I would use a hidden line, which is a dashed line. This shows me where the edges of my circle are. Now I would do the same thing as you saw with the object here. I had a square and I would project those hidden lines across as well. I would also project them into my top view. I do need to have the hidden lines to represent where my circle or any other cutouts are. Things that I don't see in the view but do exist do need hidden lines. I also need center lines. My center lines are going to go on my front view which they are going to look like a crosshair. This locates the center of my circle and we aren't going to get into dimensioning at this time. Um, that's a whole other unit, but this indicates where the center of my circle is at. Now in a view where it is hidden, I also need to use a center line as well and this center line is going to look the same except I don't have the crosshair look to it. I have the dash in the middle and I have the extended lines going out from that dash. So I will zoom in here momentarily, show you a little bit better view of those. Um, so that is how I use my hidden lines and my center lines. These are my objects. I've erased some of my construction. Um, here's a center line I'm on a face. Here's a center line with a hidden hole going through and I use hidden lines to indicate items that I cannot see in the view but do exist. Um, with this information, um, you should be ready to start uh, your multi-view drawings assignment. Um, again, if there's questions, uh, you hit the discussion form.